Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC314, our course on media and technology and ministry. Good to see all of you. Uh, I think some of you we haven't met for a long time. Anita, Jafina, Devia, Aradhana, Rosalind, Zilitoli, Rebi. Well, thank you all for joining the class. And I think the others also should be joining us. Um, I just changed, I had to change the um, the uh, classroom link. So maybe some students haven't joined us. Let me post a message. Um, let's let the students know that. Note that the um, link to the um, okay. yeah, so I just had to update the link to the Google Classroom, so um, that may have changed. All right, yeah, so others are joining in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, John and Vega, good to see all of you in the class. Great. Let's pray. Let's get started. The others will join us um, shortly, and we will get going. So could somebody please take a moment to pray with the class, and then we'll start. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the new semester that we are about to start, Jesus. Uh, God, we thank you for the course. Uh, we thank you for uh, Pastor Ashes who's going to teach us. But I just pray that Holy Spirit, you will be with us throughout the session uh, as the pastor teaches us. Help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it and understand it and accept it and be fully convinced in the truth. And God, uh, Whatever we have learned, whatever we are going to learn, Jesus, help it to uh, apply it in our life so that we can be uh, a blessing to this generation and to the generation that is about to come. We thank you for participating and I bless uh, all the classmates over here. Help us to have good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session so that uh, we can equip ourselves. Uh, for the greater purpose and the calling that you have placed in our life. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. So welcome to, once again, welcome to BC314. I've uh, just a few minutes back, I posted um, the PDF for our first lecture. So as we keep going through the course, I'll keep, you know, giving you the uh, lecture notes, PDF, and uh, you can just take it from the classwork section and uh, stay updated with the content that we're going to cover. Um, so let's first introduce um, the course and what we're going to do, uh, what our objective is, and so on, and media and technology in ministry. And I'm really uh, excited about this area media and technology uh, because um uh, it you know I, I would say in one way that we're actually privileged uh, to be living in a day and hour like this where we can actually have these tools of media and technology to uh, serve people right uh, if you go back in time uh, you know uh, couple of centuries ago, maybe, or even in the last century, uh, and if you wanted to reach people, you had to physically travel. And those days, people had to travel either by road or by ship. So you just imagine in those days, if you wanted to go and share the gospel with somebody, you know, just in a different part, in a different state, you had to physically travel. There's no other way. Uh, you have to go there and, you know, uh, so much of time, so much of energy, so much of effort to go and then slowly time evolved uh, and the media and technology tools came 
schools emerged, where today, uh, literally, you can be in one part of the world and you can serve people in so many different parts of the world. And it really is not, it makes makes things so much more easier, right? You, you, you can be in many places at the same time through using these tools of uh, media and technology. Uh, you can um, serve people according to their convenience. It doesn't cost us so much money. You don't have to buy a plane ticket and keep traveling place to place. So many things can happen. And so uh, the, this, it's just an exciting time. And uh, this whole, uh, if we just learn how to make use of these tools, it, it enables us to serve so many more people uh, in a much, much easier way. So uh, I'm really ex excited about this, uh, this area. Uh, and also feel so privileged that we can you know, make use of these, these tools uh, to reach so many people uh, so quickly uh, all over the world. So uh, this is not a technical course. That means we're not going to teach you how to use cameras or teach you how to you know, build tech, uh, things and uh, software. So, this, so there's absolutely no need uh, you know, to be a technical person to do this course. Um, we will be touching on certain technologies. I'll be mentioning things to you. Um, the idea is to uh, inform, to keep us informed of uh, what is available there uh, and some thoughts that you would need um, in making decisions and making choices um, when it comes to media and technology. Of course, there will be people who are helping you in the ministry who will be experts in this. They will know you know, the media, they will know the technical part, they will know all of that. But uh, when you are having conversations with them, when you have to make decisions, uh, when you have to make certain choices, when you have to think about strategies, then of course, it's important that you know yourself, You know what is there? How do I make the right choice? Uh, what is the criteria? Right? So it's good for, uh, for us, whether you're a pastor or whether you're whatever kind of ministry you're doing, it's good to know these things so that you can engage meaningfully with the people who are on your team, whom you're going to work with, and help make the right choices and right decisions. So um, this course is coming from that perspective, more to inform us uh, on all the op opportunities that are there and how we can make use of them, and what are some things to be careful about uh, when you're using these things, because you don't want to do something wrong and then you know unnecessarily cause trouble for um, the church or ministry that you are serving. So some of the things that we will cover uh, today, uh, we will just begin by looking at the trends and, uh, gener you know, and understanding the generations that we are serving. Uh, we'll look at some data online. Uh, of course, all of these things keep changing almost, uh, almost from month to month. So we'll just look at data online and try to understand where things are. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, Contemporary methods. So we will um, uh, we'll say, okay, you know, uh, these are all the option things that are there, and what are the guidelines we should use when we are working with different methods in ministry. And then we talk about how things have changed in various areas in the ministry of the word. You know, uh, how things have changed and how today people are ministering the word of God. Talk about changes that taken place in the in the gathering in the venue where people gather together. You know, if you come to APC, it doesn't look like this old church building. Like it's very different. You know what we people generally used to go to, and in some places still go to, uh, 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 you know, a cathedral and, and a, with an altar and all those things. Here you come and you come to a modern you know a modern gathering place. They have LEDs and lights and this that looks very different. Uh, but people are still worshiping God. They're learning about the Word of God. Uh, we talk about how worship has changed, uh, the, the the introduction and the use of creative arts, uh, print media, which is still a very useful tool. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about radio and television. Uh, some of the uh, and then some other, you know, current media, which is uh, entertainment, movies. Gaming. So when you talk about entertainment, we include performing arts uh, those over there. 
Then we kind of move into more of a, some of the digital side of things. Uh, we'll talk about digital communications, uh, some guidelines, you know, when we communicate digitally, you know, through email, through social media, and those things. How, what are some guidelines you do you to keep in mind? We'll also talk about some guidelines for graphics and videos. Uh, we'll talk about the use of social media. We'll then cover digital equipment, you know, right from cameras on to uh, audio equipment to live streaming equipment, um, those kinds of things. Uh, then we talk about software platforms that we can use, and we'll close up by just um, talking about an important part of uh, protecting people's data and confidentiality and privacy. Uh, a lot of what uh, we'll be sharing, especially in the second part of, of what we're do doing in digital communications, is basically what we are using at APC. I'll be just sharing with you, you know, this is what we're doing at APC and uh, this is how we are going about things. Uh, so it's coming from uh, a practical, you know, this is how we're doing things and sharing with you. And also point you maybe to some other, uh, uh, you know, churches or ministries that are kind of are on the cutting edge of, of how they're using these uh, media and technology and the tools that are there uh, and uh, I'll point you to those kinds of things. So this is generally how we are going to go, uh, what we're going to cover in this course. I hope you'll find it useful. Um, as always, there'll be one simple assessment at the end uh, and it's, it's a non-technical assessment. So, you know, you don't have to memorize or learn any technical things just 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 for you just cover that okay you you understood the course uh, you understood uh, you know the 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 ideas that we have shared how to make decisions etc so that would be the assessment um, so you don't have to you know uh, worry about learning technology and so on right okay so let's get started we want to talk about the trends that are there and uh, just understanding generation. So I'll, I'll just introduce this and, I'll, and then we will take uh, time. Feel free to ask questions anytime, uh, like how we always do, right? So when we talk about media, we're really talking about the various means or ways of communicating en masse. That means to large numbers of people, right? So um, uh, we're talking about uh, different uh, forms uh, of communication, whether you're doing broadcasting, publishing, online, internet, uh, and uh, they can take on different formats, whether you're doing print media or you're doing television, movies, games, uh, music, or using mobile phones, all kinds of things. So basically, it's a, we're talking about means to reach the masses. That's what we're referring to when we say media. Technology, of course, we are using that to talk about the skills, uh, the equipment that we use, the software and the hardware um, that we use uh, in order to, you know, to do what we want, to serve people or to manage data or to communicate uh, and so on. So media and technology, technology referring to the software and the hardware, the equipment, the things that we use to serve the people. Now, it's very interesting. Uh, to look at some information online. Uh, let me see, am I sharing it? Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I, I, I did not start sharing my screen. Oh, I'm really sorry. Let me share my screen. Okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I should have started by sharing my screen. All right, so here's the course notes. I was, I was looking at my course notes and I forgot that I was not sharing. So um, this, this was kind of just the introduction I gave and these are the things we're going to be covering uh, in this course, the trends and uh, methods and, and so on, and the grading marks and so on, right? So in the PDF here, uh, we just explained what media and technology. So let's look at some online data. And I, I just give the link here because some of these things keep on changing uh, time to time. So it's best to go online and see what's the current data. So uh, what's happening globally you know, in, in the digital world? So we just go to this link. Um, and I think you can see it. Just ignore the advertisements because there's an online portal. 
so you can see my screen? Yeah. OK. So as of towards the end of 2023, we can see that about 65% of the world's population are online. They're using the internet. I mean, 65%, you know, yes, it's not, you know, 100%, it's not the whole world, but it's definitely a huge percentage. You know, 65% of the world are connected to the internet, they're, on, they're, they're online, and it's growing, right? Um, uh, it, it's increased, you know, by uh, so almost, almost 4% year on year, the things are increasing. And uh, you look at uh, the internet use over time, you can see steady increase. That means more and more people, individuals, are connecting, are being connected online. Right. So this gives us a great opportunity. Okay? If, if if we can leverage the internet, we have the potential of reaching a huge part of the world's population. You know, just online, because they are there now. Of course. We have to take into account language. Uh, not everybody is speaking English, but a good percentage would speak English. Uh, we have to take into account how they're accessing the internet. Uh, uh, you know, a good percentage will be using mobile phones. Uh, some will be maybe on computer, laptop, other those kinds of devices, and so on. So you know, we have to take those things with take those things into account, of course. But there's so this gives us such a big opportunity right um, and uh, let's look at these things here the um, out of the total population you've got about 5.6 billion people right, who are uh, phone subscribers 69 percent have a mobile phone uh, 65 percent using the internet and 61% are in some form of social media. So this is a great opportunity, again, you know, for us to understand that uh, there are people that we can reach online, uh, through the internet, through uh, social media, and they are connected using their mobile phones. So, sorry. Right. And you can read, uh, there's, there's a lot of information that we can read. Uh, about sorry, sorry about all the ads here. Uh, okay. So, and this whole presentation is something you can look into. Um, uh, and uh, I'm just going to go to some of the um, digital reports. I'm sorry. Oh, all these ads here, top 10 trends. All right, it's the same data here. Okay, so it's got a lot of um, this data. I'm not necessarily going to go through all of them, but uh, the point is this data is available and you can look at what is happening. So you can see, you know, um, in terms of male and female, um, how many people generally are online. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other data. This one highlights some things. You can see where from different parts of the world, uh, what uh, the, the population of people who are online and so you know, and i try to think about this you know uh, there's such a huge population uh, from southern asia east asia uh, that are online so huge percentage uh, huge numbers of people i should say online from different these regions asia east asia or online reaching uh, and it gives us an opportunity to reach them so think think about this. You know, we can be sitting here somewhere in India, Asia, 
and we are, we have access to reaching so many millions so remember these numbers are millions of people uh, all over the world what an opportunity okay? so we can uh, reach people all across and there's a lot of other information i'm not going to go through um, all of this data the other other piece of information that we can also look at uh, that has I've linked up, linked to uh, in the uh, uh, again, this is another website that gives us data um, statistics. Uh, so this is as of October 2023, uh, number of internet users, number of social media users. Um, let me also click on the other one. We we'll look at the, uh, you know, so um, what are people doing online? Right? Uh, of course, people are trading online a lot. Uh, but then look at the number of emails, WhatsApp messages, the global hours that are spent online. And then what do we see? We see a lot of people searching online, right? So that's an opportunity. Like if people are searching online, um, yeah, if, if we can, you know, make use of that when people are searching, can they find us? People are spending a lot of time on Facebook posts, doing things on Facebook. Uh, they're spending a lot of time watching reels or sending uh, on Instagram. Uh, they're spending a lot of time on shopping on Amazon. Uh, some, you know, some are on Twitter, and some are also streaming songs uh, online. So you see, this is where people are spending time online. Uh, you know, what are people doing? Uh, they're watching content on Twitch as well. So these are, you know, so we get an idea. Okay, this is what people are doing online. Can we, in some way, engage? In some way, connect? Uh, to what people are doing, what they're spending their time on, right? So it's good to have this kind of information so we can uh, look at what's going on. Um, what are, okay, okay, this data is a little old, almost one year old, but what are the most popular apps that people are using? I see WhatsApp, lots of people are using WhatsApp. So that's a good thing. So we need to uh, see how we can leverage that. And of course, then there are other apps that people also use. Uh, but many people are on WhatsApp. Can be you know, there used to be a time when SMS was a big thing, but now you know that people are moved away from that and uh, spending more time engaging on WhatsApp. So we can try and leverage that or connect with people using that kind of information. So the, uh, so it's good for us to just stay in touch with current trends. I've just given you some links here um, for us to say, OK, this is what people are doing online. This is where people are spending their time. Uh, this is the kind of media they're consuming. You saw that they, people are spending you know, time watching short reels. Um, you know, so that means they're not necessarily watching. I mean, of course, people are spending lots of time watching movies and so on. But in terms of total time that people are spending, short reels, right? So can we do things there that will connect with people? People want to spend one minute, two minutes, watch something interesting, keep moving on. So uh, can we do things there? So it's good to understand where people are spending their time, where they are, so we can reach. The other thing that we must keep in mind when we're thinking about using media and technology is to understand different generations and again our data is available online on all of this and I'll, I'll just try to summarize some of these thoughts um, understanding different generations right so sociologists people who study uh, society and generations they 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 classify generations in groups of every 15 years every 15 years so uh, the generations that we are interested in, um, of course, uh, we can go all the way from 
uh, earlier generations, uh, the baby boomers, uh, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, uh, Alpha and Beta, uh, they're still up out in the future, uh, Beta still out in the future. But every 15 years, there's a generation. So some of us may belong to the baby boomers in the 60s, 70s and 80s, Gen Z, uh, X, Gen Y, and then the Gen Z, which is basically 95 uh, to 2010 in that range, right? And then you have the Gen Alpha, that's 2010 to the current year that we are, uh, about that 15 year period. So, and we can study um, you know, each of these generations to see how they are engaging with media and technology and what has been the impact. And there's one uh, Christian organization that has done uh, a lot of study on it and they've put out, their, they've shared their uh, uh, study online. So you could go to global youth culture, not net and look at that research. But I'm just summarizing some of the things that they have found. Uh, and it's, it's not too long ago, 2020 research, uh, just asking Gen Z uh, the questions. So remember Gen Z would be people who, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe in their teens to their so the late 20s, right? Uh, the teens to their late 20s. Uh, they are there in that age range. And uh, uh, what here's just a summary of that research, right? They found out that this generation, and, and if you look at people that we are trying to reach, the teens, the young adults, uh, that's basically Gen Z that we are trying to look at. What do we find? We find that they're also, they are the least religious generation ever. Um, they have moved away from conventional expressions of faith. Uh, trying to define faith on their own, you know, okay, I will figure this out, I will make my own philosophy and I'll be my own. Uh, so in terms of following conventional faith, they are least religious. It doesn't mean that they have no interest in God. It just means that they are trying to define things on their own. And some of them in their journey may end up saying there's no God, but they're trying to define things. They're digital natives, that means they were born, uh, you know, with some digital, you know, with digital things all around them. They were born into this world. So almost from the moment they were born, they were exposed to all kinds of digital um, tools and content. They're constantly connected. Um, they're entrepreneurial. They like to, you know, try out new things, step out new things. The way they learn is very different. They're self-learners. That means they go and find out. And you know, if they want to learn something, go on YouTube, find it, learn. You know, it's not like, oh, I have to go to school or I have to attend something to learn. No, they're self -learners. They can learn and they will learn whatever they want because content is there for them, readily available. And they're also very ambitious. So this is a summary of the findings. There are a lot more details that you can look at. But you know, what, what is the impact of all this on their lives, uh, on the lives of these people? Um, uh, and this is, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, they, they, don't be, uh, they, they, they don't believe that if you're online, it has to compromise your authenticity. That means you can be authentic. You, you know, of course we know that a, a lot of false things happen online. We know that. But they also, the gen, we're talking about Gen Z, the, the teens and young adults, uh, they feel that, hey, I can be just myself. You know, so I, what you see is things that I'm expressing. I can be authentic. I can be real. But, you know, we know that some things are not, are not always that. Um, so 55% say that who they are on, who they are on social media is somewhat close to who they are in real life. Uh, they, a large number feel that they are actually authentic, not fake. Uh, makes them feel confident and included. And a lot of them also would like to remain anonymous. 
uh, and you know they can handle multiple social media accounts and it's just something they do easily work through thing so for them uh, it, what's interesting is they don't see social media as an enemy of authenticity right many of us by default you say a hey, you know who people put yeah, that's not the real person but they don't perceive it like that uh, they look at it as a space where they can say what they want to say express what they want to express uh freely and stay anonymous not not you know not necessarily uh, want to uh, reveal themselves so that's an interesting uh, finding uh, another interesting thing is uh, they are heavily connected you know almost eight hours are you know they spend almost eight hours online connected right? they are constantly connected uh, majority of the teens and young adults have their own phone um, they if they don't have the phone, they have anxiety. Uh, and this is a new thing. It's like a smartphone separation anxiety. They're like, hey, where's my phone? <laughs> I haven't checked my phone in the last five minutes or something like that. Um, that's a negative impact that uh, they all feel. Uh, they can't handle being separated from their phone. And, uh, but it also has uh, the result is sleep deprivation. I mean, so much of time is consumed on that and it's impacting their mental health. So that's something you need to you know, recognize the impact of it. Um, a lot of, um, and again, this is, this is more specific to US teens. They spend so many hours on social media um, and uh, it affects them emotionally. Uh, uh, it does impact them, uh, and uh, they uh, can feel de depressed, which leading, leads them to suicidal thoughts, right? So um, that's the impact, the negative impact of being online so much and how it's affecting people. And there are other aspects as well. Like we mentioned, they're entrepreneurial, they're self-learners. That means they learn a lot, so education itself has been redefined in terms of uh, Gen Z and uh, because of the uh, internet and uh, generation alpha. So there's, a, there's an interesting study online. I'll click on this because I think it's useful to know it's there, um, that you could go and um, uh, uh, look at, uh, I'll, I'll see they have a free PDF here. Uh, there's, there's a nice infographic that you can look at. Um, I think I already have this somewhere. Mm, okay, wait a minute. All right, let me just, I think I already downloaded this one minute. Just give me a moment. Um, Twenty. All right, let me just share this. Um, share my screen. OK, so this is that, um, that um, graphic that you can just download from that link, uh, of course. So uh, basically, what it's, uh, what it's saying is that uh, when you look at uh, different generations, X, gen generation X, Y, and Z, and, and the number of people who are in the workforce uh, and uh, generation alpha, that are slow, some of them are slowly coming into the workforce. Um, you know, they, they're just trying to help us understand what are the characteristics of these, these different uh, 
generations. Uh, and each, the, each generation is, you know, has grown up with different technologies, different ways of learning, and so on. Okay, maybe this is, um, yeah. Uh, so again, you, you can look at it, uh, you know, in detail. Um, the technologies that are coming in, or things that are, you know, uh, which Gen Z, Gen Alpha are very comfortable with, uh, the iPads, the Instagram, uh, having uh, Siri and other voice uh, assistants, uh, and so on. And all of the these things that older generation, the, the baby boomers, the Gen X, those things are being slowly going out. Whereas these new technologies are what is coming in, uh, which the Gen Z and Gen Alpha are uh, in a family of it. And also the change in the kinds of jobs. If you look at the lowest uh, row, the new kinds of jobs that are coming in, uh, uh, which these the, the incoming generation are comfortable with. And here's a, you know the same thing. It's, it's kind of put in a vertical way. The toys, the music devices, the leadership styles, and the screen content. So um, the builders, that's, that's you know we don't we may not have too many of them, but 1925, 1945 generation. Um, you know, the leadership style, and I just meant you know it was very uh, uh, unilateral, controlling. They watched cinema, cinemas. Baby boomers was again. Similar, very directing. We had televisions coming in. Gen X, more of coordinators. We had VHS tapes then. Gen Y, there's more of guiding. Uh, the internet came on. Gen Z, they are teens and young adults. They, they are comfortable with empowering. They are onto mobile devices. The Gen Alpha, it's more of inspiring leadership that they're comfortable with, more of streaming, uh, watching things online, so on. Okay? That's how they consume. So it's just info interesting to um, look at uh, this information. And you can click on this link, Generation Alpha, and you can download the PDF. Okay? So um, that just so the, the main point I want us to understand is how we communicate to different generations. Uh, we need to understand, right? So understand how Gen Gen Z, which are the teens, young adults, Gen Alpha were just coming on, uh, Gen X and Gen Y, how these different generations, how they're relating to technology, what kind of media are they comfortable consuming, right? how they are engaging online. We need to understand these different generations so that we can prepare our content, and we can use tools uh, very meaningfully to target these generations. Okay, so let me pause you and see if there are any questions before we jump into our next chapter. Maybe we can go for a break and come back. Any thoughts, any comments, any questions so far? With the introduction, with what we're going to cover in this course, and uh, anything we've just spoken about now. Any questions, any thoughts? Everyone's fine. Okay. All right. Everyone's good. Okay. So, um, what I want to just um, bring our attention to before we go for the break is that um, we must be open to using contemporary methods in Christian minister, right? That means we should not think that media and technology are evil. Because in general, I'm speaking generally, in times past, that was a default reaction from the church. You know, 
uh, when television came first, you know, oh, that was a bad, that is the, you know, devil's, you know, uh, box, uh, that is hell coming in. All kinds of people are, I'm talking about the church generally. I'm speaking in general terms. I'm not saying everybody did it. But generally, people say, oh, no, television is such an evil thing. Then slowly people realize, hey, you can actually use television to preach the gospel. And then we had a lot of Christian stations and preachers and people getting on television and they started, you know, uh, bringing Christian programming on TV. In the middle of all the other things that are around, of course, there's a lot of bad uh, that, can, that, that people are doing. And then there's the general stuff, which is the news and other entertainment kind of things. But then the church realized we can use television to reach people. Same thing happened when the internet you know, came on. I said, oh, no, internet, don't go online. It's evil, it's so on and so forth. Then people say, hey, we can actually use the internet to reach people. And we can have a website, we can put out content, and so on. And so as new things, um, new media, new forms of media, uh, new tools uh, in technology become available, I think our response should not be, oh, it's an evil thing, don't engage, don't use. No. Our response should be, let me understand this and see how I can use it for kingdom work, for the sake of the gospel. Of course, a lot of other people will be using it you know, to spread wrong things, evil things. That is their part. But we should look at how can I use this you know, for good? So even with recent advancements, like since last year, suddenly, uh, after Chad GPT was released, um, and it, then everybody started understanding about AI and you know artificial intelligence and machine learning as well. And uh, you know, how should the church respond to it? I feel uh, I, uh, that we should look at, hey, how can I use that for the sake of the gospel? How can I use uh, these AI? Is just a tool. Uh, it's not replacing human beings. It's it's just a tool that we have created, we have made that we can, you know, take advantage of. So our response should be, how can I use this tool for the sake of the gospel? Where can I put it to use to serve people? You know, and there are a lot of opportunities, uh, even with the recent advancements in uh, AI and machine learning, that we can actually use for the sake of the gospel. And they've already started, they've already started using it, you know? And so we have to think like that. And rather than by default saying any new thing is bad, uh, we should be able to take it and say, let's see how to use it, okay? So with that, let's pause for now and we'll come back and then we'll start you know, getting into um, uh, some more thoughts here that, that we want to share. Let's take a break and we'll come back in at 11 o'clock, we a little longer break, I think, 10, 15 minutes, but it's okay. Uh, just take a break and then we'll come back, okay? See you in a few minutes, thanks.